Hi there, everyone. Welcome to Confessions of a Domestic Engineer. I do apologize. These have been kind of off with uh, the frequency that they've been coming out. I had a regular beat kind of going there, but then the world just keeps getting weird, and I don't even know what to talk about on Confessions of a Domestic Engineer anymore. But then this article came up this morning in my feed, and I couldn't help but want to share it. So let's go. All right, everyone, I came across this article this morning, and I, I had to get into this one because I've covered topics similar to this in the past. And this goes really big with, you know, me calling myself a domestic engineer, all right? You know, so obviously, I am all for equality, okay? I believe in, I believe in equality of choice, but that does not mean equality of outcome, all right? So, l let me get into this article. Ontario University research positions restricted to those who are women, transgender, non-binary, or two-spirit. So, I'm going to ignore the fact that two-spirit, I will only allow if you are First Nations, because that's where it comes from. Otherwise, you are, uh, what is that? term yeah you know which term i'm talking about okay so we're gonna move away from the cultural appropriation i don't accept non-binary sorry i don't um i i, I do not accept non-binary I, I don't believe you can be genderless or that you can not conform to either that sounds to me like what we used to call multiple personality disorder Especially if you think your gender can flip from day to day. Sorry. Yeah. And once again, I am a domestic engineer who likes to dress in drag. Much respect for the trans community. But not the trans supporting community either. I, I've had enough of that crap with them too. Because the trans community is awesome and cool, man. I've known trans people. I've talked about this in past episodes. I'm cool with the trans community. It's the trans supporting community that I'm not cool with. They're, they're insane. They're nuts. All right. I See how this is starting and I've only gotten to the top headline here. Okay, so let's go. All right. The University of Waterloo has restricted hiring for at least three top-tier research positions to certain demographic groups. In two instances, excluding applications from all cisgender men, whether they are white or people of color. Hey, brothers, we're all in the same group on this one now. All right. <laughs> and in another, refusing applications from anyone who d doesn't identify as indigenous. All right, moving down here. So this is all at the University of Waterloo. Pretty little sign there. <laughs> okay, the restrictions are aimed at addressing a lack of diversity among Canadian research chairs. 2,285 prestigious positions funded by the federal government and based at post-secondary institutions across the country. But some argue excluding people from the hiring process is not the best way to eliminate discrimination. No, it is not. Because you know what? This is just going to piss off more dudes. And I'll get to this. Just, just give me a few, okay? A recent, Canadian, uh, a recent Canada research chair posting at the University of Waterloo for climate change, water and future cities research in the Faculty of Environment is restricted to those who self-identify, self-identify, okay, as women, transgender, non-binary, or two-spirit. A job notice in the Faculty of Engineering has the same requirements. A second engineering position is open only to First Nations, Métis, Inuit, Anuk, and those from other indigenous communities across Turtle Island. Yeah. 
Improving the representation, participation, and engagement of equity, deserving groups within our community is a key objective of Waterloo's strategic plan 2020 through 2025, says the job posting in the environment faculty. Mary Lynn Baudreau, Director of Performance, Equity, not Equality, Equity, and Diversity for the Tri-Agency Institutional Program Secretariat, Director of Performance, Equity, and Diversity for the Tri-Agency Institutional Programs Secretariat. Okay, can we say giant made-up freaking position name to put someone in a position so they they can pretend that they're hitting check marks. Okay, that, that's what that is. That's like being the chief CEO of assistant director of blah, 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 of chief operations executive officer of the country bumpkin of the chief, whatever, you know, you get where I'm going with this. Okay, I know that was horrible. I'm sorry. But oh my God, what a joke title. This is why the Canadian government pisses away so much money, because they make up all these joke titles. All right. Which administers to the Canadian Research Chair Program said only a small number of positions are advertised with such exclusive criteria as a way to help institutions meet their targets to ensure that we have representation. See, right there, they say, flat out, that is the condemning statement, to help institutions meet their targets, to help institutions check off magical imaginary boxes to make sure that there is representation. Now, there's a continue reading button and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip the continue reading that because I want to now jump over to just a brief Google search. I hate doing these punch-ins when I'm editing, but I have to do a punch-in here and explain something that happened. I recorded all the stats on my screen, but I wasn't paying attention to the shaping and I cut off a small little edge on my Google search. I went back to go to the exact page I had grabbed all the information from. All the information is missing. Every little bit of information I originally pulled up to do this is missing. So what you're going to see is video footage I originally shot and it's slightly cut off. I do apologize. Women in engineering. Now, right away, because I did this as a Google search, I guarantee you these are American numbers. They're not Canadian numbers. I, I am willing to totally, totally go with that. Um, so, talking about Canada and the U.S., things are definitely different between the two. Um, but no, these numbers, I think, are safe to play within the same numbers. Because when... When you go and you check census information for percentages on, like, say, LGBT numbers and st or, or, you know, male-female numbers, stuff like that, for populations in the U.S. or in Canada, they balance out pretty close a lot of the time. And that is with Canada only being 10% of the population that the U.S. is. You know, U.S. is, last I checked, 333 million. We're at, like, I think 36 million, something like that. Not looking up those numbers, they don't matter. What we're looking at here is, okay, one of the things that came up. What percentage of engineers are female? STEM occupations, architecture and engineering managers. 8.5% are women. So that means less than 10% of architectural and engineering managers are women. And yet, they're supposed to make up 50% of the upper branches, but only 10% of the actual field. Mm -hmm. Chemical engineers. Ooh, this is the big one. This is the big one. 15.1% of chemical engineers are women. Means 85% are men. Or sorry, 84.9% are men. Yes, you're going to have more men higher up than you're going to have women. And to try and promote more women higher up is not equity. 
It's not equality. It's favoritism. It's preferential treatment. Only, by these numbers, only 15% of higher-ups should be women because only 15% of the industry is made up of women. That is true equality. Okay? That is equality of outcome based on equality of opportunity. Mechanical engineers, 8.5% are women. 8 point, once again, we are under the 10% threshold. Okay? Under the 10% threshold. But somehow... You're still supposed to have 50% of women up at the top? Computer network architects, 8.6. I was actually surprised that number was so low because I know a lot of women that have been going into computer network stuff for a long time. I've heard some line about how much of a boys club it is. And it is. Because, oh wait, only 8.6% of the industry is women. Let me take this off the screen. We're going to come back around. So, there's clearly an issue with women not wanting to go into engineering. Women don't want to do engineering. That's what the numbers show, is that women don't want to do the field. Women don't want to make the commitment to the field. And that's the thing, is when you're an engineer, it is not a nine-to-five job. Your engineering firm may be open, say, nine-to-five but it's not a nine to five job because depending on what type of engineer you are, you've got to be available 24 seven for anything that may or may not come up. You know, if there's a major problem with something you've designed that's going to stop production dead flat, your ass needs to pop up and be there at a drop of a hat. Drop of a hat. Got to be there. And if you're not there, you're not going to be the engineering firm used again in the future. And this comes down to the concept of feminists, not women. Feminists want it all. They want equality of outcome without equality of effort. You know, you keep hearing about all these women complaining there's not enough women up in management positions. There's not, not. If you only have a, a very small, a fringe minority pool to pull from, and you are specifically pulling from that pool, you're not even guaranteeing you're getting the best person from the job. You're just checking off boxes. And that is why we are seeing so much slippage with stuff now. And why you're hearing so much about jobs where men are walking away and men have had enough. I mean, the whole men go their own way movement, while it's generally based off relationships, isn't just about relationships anymore. Guys are just dropping out because they've had enough. Um, for example, uh, I, I, I love watching Better Bachelor, Joker over, over on Better Bachelor. We don't agree on everything. But we agree on a lot, and he is a computer net. He was a computer networking specialist or computer engineering specialist or something. I can't remember exactly what he said he, he used to do before he went to. And he's mentioned himself. There aren't a lot of women in that industry, and the women that are in that industry were looking for preferential treatment. They wanted to bust through that glass ceiling. But they didn't want to put the time and effort in to bust through that glass ceiling. Like, the reality is, if you want to be a mom, if you want to be a mom, okay? So that means you're there in the morning when your kids get up, you make them breakfast, you get them off to school, and then you want to be there for them when you get home. You can't bust through the glass ceiling. Sorry. If you want to be able to pop out 2.3 kids and... You want to take the time off instead of letting your man have the time off. I, 
I mean, that used to piss me off. When I worked at the evil corporation, which I won't mention, Canadian retailer that no longer exists anymore, it used to piss me off because all of the cashiers I worked with, except all the full-time cashiers I worked with, except for two, actually, except for one, took time off regularly. Uh, I had, well, one was my ex-wife who took maternity leave for my son. <laughs> this was back before we were together, actually. That's a whole different story, though. Um, but that was six months she was gone. We still got the same raise at the end of the day. Even though she was missing for six months, I was there. She still got the same raise I got. Another one had a medical condition. Uh, I believe it was fibromyalgia. So she was off regularly because of all of the pain that she was in. She couldn't work, but she was still getting the same raises I was getting. Another one was off regularly because she emotionally was having problems. She was still getting the same raises I was getting. Keep in mind, also, uh, and there was another one who was full-time who went off for maternity. Like, maternity leave was the big one. But they all got at least the same raise as I did. Keep in mind, I was the one that had to go get carts when the stock people, all women at the time, refused to go get them. I had to do the carryouts when the stock people were too busy to do the carry. So I had to do all these extra jobs on top of being a cashier because I was a man. And this was okay. I actually pitched a complaint about this multiple times. Multiple times. I had huge issues with this and complained about it. And I was laughed at. You wonder why I have huge issues with this diversity crap? It's because of how poorly... Women have treated me, and not just at that evil job. There have been quite a few jobs that I've worked at where the women honestly treat the guys like they're dogs. They think the guys are there to do the work, and blah, 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 and that's it. Now, the job I work at right now, that is not the case whatsoever. I actually have to regularly give one of my female co-workers crap because I think she overdoes it too much on herself. And, you know, I say, if you need stuff that is heavy... Come and get me. I will do it. I don't mind. And I don't mind heavy lifting. I do like heavy lifting, okay? Because it's good exercise. You know, it stops the man boobs from getting too big. <laughs> um, and I'm also the tallest dude in the place. So when it comes to reaching the top shelf, you know, when you're the tallest person in the place, that's kind of your job is to reach the top shelf. <laughs> but... And, and, and it sucks, but you get used to it after a while. It just becomes part of your personality. The trade-up, though, is I don't do the bottom shelf. The, I will get anything on the top shelf. I don't get on the bottom shelf because it's too low down for me. For me to work the bottom shelf, I literally have to sit on my ass to get on the bottom shelf. So my new job, none of this sexist crap. I mean, we make sexist jokes towards each other, but we actually do it in good, playful, fun bantering. No one is cranky with each other good group of people i work with but that doesn't make up for every other horrible experience i have had working with women in retail doesn't make up for it in the slightest because let me tell you women in retail are disgustingly horrible and you want to see sexism you want to see true blue sexism go watch retail Oh, yeah. Even now I go in, and it still is. If you go to the last place I worked at um, as a full time job, they had a real bad habit of not hiring the best people for the job. They hired people that checked off boxes. I worked in a we're going to call it a hardware store, for lack of better anything else. It was not really a hardware store, but it, it was it was typically a man's store. It was a tool shop. Okay, we'll call it. You know, they made tool, or we sold tools. We sold stuff for engineering, sh stuff like that. Okay, so we did have a female clientele. 
And we had a cool female. I love the women that came in there. Women that came in there were awesome. But the bulk of our customers were nudes. All right. The big bulk of our customers were nudes. And dudes typically want to talk to other dudes about tools, especially in a day and age where, you know, they want to joke around stuff like that. And, you know, you might offend a lady if you joke around the wrong way. And yes, that did happen. But in a store that was primarily men, it, male employees, okay? There, there were, you know, like I like to say it was 50-50, but it wasn't 50-50. It was primarily male employees. When I started, there was one male supervisor. When I left, or one, one male supervisor and they were the assistant manager. That assistant manager had been there for 10 years, could not get the manager position. They kept hiring people from outside of the store or people from beneath him because they kept hiring women for the manager position. Okay. But then all the supervisors were women too. And when the assistant manager said, okay, I've had enough. I can't do this anymore. If you guys aren't going to promote me, I'm just going to step down because I just forget it. I don't want the stress anymore. It took them forever to hire somebody else. And then they finally brought in an assistant manager, a new assistant manager who they brought in a man. So still the only male supervisor position was the assistant manager. And then they were having nothing but problems and, and, and fallbacks and whatnot. So they brought in yet a second assistant manager who also was a male. So, by the time I left, they had two males in supervisor positions for a total of three over the entire course of time I had been there. Three men in manager or assistant manager or supervisor positions. But they had gone through twenty women. Maybe not 20, might have been 15 women. Complete rotation of women. Seriously. Every female supervisor that was there when I started was gone by the time I left, and they were all replaced with female supervisors. And it's not that guys weren't applying. Guys were applying. Guys were getting shot down. Because the new manager that had come... See, now... The manager that hired me, she would have promoted at least one of the guys into a supervisor position because she had been grooming him for a supervisor position. And then she left and the new supervisor came in. The new supervisor came in and she got the job either because she checked off a box as a young female... And the company can then use bragging rights. Oh, well, we are promoting these young females into these positions and blah, blah, blah. Except for this young female was nowhere near qualified for the, this position. Never should have been given this position. And definitely should not have been given this position over the assistant manager that was already there. All right. But it's all about checking off the boxes. At least for the ladies. And I don't, yeah, I just, it, it's a mess. It really is. It, it's a giant mess. And this is the type of stuff, this article is the type of stuff that's regularly showing up as a mess. And do I sound like I am blah, 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 this or blah, 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 that? And I'm sure there's some extreme lefts that are going to definitely rip on me for this. But the extreme left is as much of a problem as the extreme right. And those are problems that got to go. We have got to stop listening to the 10% on the far end of both sides of the spectrum because they're both idiots and come to the middle. You know? How do you have a store that's supposed to be geared towards job industries that are for men where it's nothing but women servicing? Like, if you go into any hardware store, okay? I'm sorry, but if you go into framing, you go, you know, house framing, you go into any 
outdoor, dirty job, construction environment. It is almost always men working in those environments. And then they go to stores, but it's always women in the store service, doing the service for it. It, it doesn't make sense. And the only reason that happens is because of how cheaply these stores are paying. And guys can't work in these low jobs because if they work in these low jobs, they become the bottom 80%. And they can't get a woman because women don't want men that make less money than them, unless you're my Tracy. You know, once again, I'm blessed. Okay, folks, I've rambled. I've gone on. I'm sure you understand where I'm going with this. I hope you understand where I'm going with this, how this checking off boxes has got to stop. Hire the best person for the job. Hire the most experienced person for the job. Pay the person the money that they deserve for the job. Don't just cater to whatever box needs to be checked off. It's BS. Anyways, I'm done. It's over. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. There's a link below that will take you to Patreon. And there's a second link below that that will take you over to Confessions of a Lego Imagineer. Which is my little humorous uh, Lego show. And it is, it is literally a family comedy, so, you know, go over and enjoy that. We don't talk about serious subjects like we do here. It's all jokes. Anyways, and it's not even me, it's Lego. Um, peace, love, take care.